guys, welcome back. It's been a hot minute since I last did a Cozy Up to Roundup and I figured I should rectify that immediately. <laughs> um, I actually got the idea based on my last Cozy Mystery all about the Meg Langslow series, which by the way, if you haven't watched that, I will go ahead and link it now. That way you can see and hear all about what my favorite Cozy Mystery series is. Spoiler alert, it's the Meg Langslow series. <laughs> um, but anyway, doing that video actually gave me the idea for this one, which um, if you haven't guessed from the title, is all about bingeable cozy mysteries, AKA cozy mysteries with epic backlist. And when I say epic, I mean like 20 plus books in the series. Now, I have mentioned this time and time again whenever I'm talking about not just cozy mysteries, but series in general, and that's the fact that I love series. More than that, even better is coming across a series that is new to me, that you realize after reading and enjoying the first book that they have this long backlist for you to just go in and just absorb, <laughs> live in the world, be with the characters for a long while. And so I figured that that would be the perfect theme for today's Cozy Up To video, talking all about a handful of cozies for you to um, dig into if you haven't already heard of them, knowing that each of these series has a minimum of 20 books in their backlog. Um, and now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure most of them actually have over 25. Uh, but regardless, it's a whole lot of books. In fact, if you read a book a week or a book every other week, it'll be enough to get you through an entire year or half a year or whatever. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the intro, and then we can talk about the books. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the series that gave me the idea to begin with, and that is the Meg Langslow series. Now, I promise I'm not going to harp on about it because let's be honest, I spent 20 minutes in my last video talking about how much I love it and gushing all about it. But um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I will give you a quick recap and um, tell you that the Meg Langslow series stars Meg, obviously. She is a blacksmith living with her family in a small town in Virginia, obviously solving crimes as amateur sleuths do in each of the books. Now, um, let's talk about why you're here, which is how many books are in the series? Well, as of right now, there are 28 books in the series, but by the end of the year, there will be 30. So you've got tons of books to dive into if you were to pick one of these up and enjoy it and really just want to just dive into and be with Meg and hang out with her in Virginia throughout all of these books. Um, I really enjoy the series, that goes without saying, <laughs> um, but I will say just really quickly, one of the great things, because I'm pretty sure I've read um, almost all, I had to have read at least 25 of the books, but one of the things that you'll notice is constant without with throughout the books is the fact um, that her family plays a regular role and because they are interesting, quirky people with their own personalities, it's fun to kind of see them evolve along with Meg. Next on the list is the Stephanie Plum series written by Janet Ivanovic. Um, I have mentioned this series before, but I typically don't mention it often. Yes, it's technically a cozy mystery, um, but to be honest, it's a little bit more Mm, hard hitting, I guess, than the other typical cozies that I'm used to. Don't get me wrong, you've still kind of got your amateur sleuth, solving crimes, um, quirky set of characters, etc. But for some reason, um, it just doesn't scream cozy, even though it technically is. So I wanted to go ahead and add it on this list anyway, because yes, there is an epic backlist. In fact, there are 28 books in the series. I remember way back, and I'm talking like when Borders bookstores were still open, <laughs> finding a box set of this series, well, it was multiple box sets, but basically coming across this series, I picked the first book up and I blew through it, and then I kid you not, I went back to the bookstore the next day, picked up the box sets, which were, I think came in threes, so like, um, one through three, yes, I bought book one all over again because it was cheaper to get the box set. Um, one through three, four through six, seven through nine, etc. Um, so anyway, I love this series. <laughs> and um, basically we've got Stephanie Plum who is a 
horrible at her job, might I add, <laughs> Bounty Hunter. Um, she does kind of improve, and it's not horrible, horrible. It's just comedic because she's obviously, um, you know, not a natural. She is this five four woman from Jersey who just needs a job, basically, because she was fired from her last one. Um, she's got a sidekick named Lula who is an ex prostitute who basically serves as her wing woman. And then there's also a will they won't they love triangle between two other guys mentioned throughout the series, Ranger and Morelli good guy bad guy I won't even get into that but it's a fun series I will say and one that definitely deserves an epic backlist if you pick one of these books up and you're hooked the fact that there are just so many for you to go through again 28 of them really speaks a lot and I do want to touch on one thing really quickly just in case you are not familiar with the series um, my favorite part is the titles as you have obviously no doubt heard me mention I love punny titles or titles that kind of um, relate to the story or each other somehow and this series is no exception because I believe all 28 mention uh, the number of the book in their title so we've got one for the money two for the something two for the dough maybe <laughs> all the way up to like lucky 27 that's probably not at all the name of the title <laughs> but you get what i'm saying basically we've got the number in the series of the book as the book title which i think is so interesting and at the same time it helps you remember what book you're actually on because let's be honest by the time you're like eight, nine, ten books into the series, they blend together in terms of what number you're on. So this is a good way for you to keep track. Okay, <laughs> I gotta be honest, surprised I didn't leave this list off with this next series, but if you've been around my channel for a while, uh, this next series is not at all gonna surprise you, the fact that I've added it to this list, and that is my dear to my heart, Jessica Fletcher, Murder, She Wrote Mysteries. <laughs> Again, I have talked about this series forever and a day, as many times as I can. I've got a video dedicated to my love for the Murder, She Wrote mystery series, but in terms of the epic backlist, which is the whole point of this video, this one tops the charts with a whopping 52 books out. Um, technically, before the end of the year, I think there are gonna be 53. There's probably like, two, one or two more scheduled to be released by the end of the year. But anyway, there's at least 52 books out, which is insane. Talk about an epic backlist, especially for a um, singular character, which obviously I love. <laughs> I will hang out with Jessica Fletcher as many times as I can, as much as possible. But um, if for some reason you're not familiar with the premise of the story, you may have heard about the show but don't really know what it's about other than this old lady. Um, basically, <laughs> we have Jessica Fletcher who is a retired school teacher living in a small town in Maine, Cabot Cove. And uh, once she retires, she starts writing mystery books. And that kind of serendipitously delves her into becoming an amateur sleuth, helping her uh, share a friend solve crimes within their small towns. And then whenever she is around on vacation or out doing a book tour, if there is a murder that happens out of the state or wherever she is, she kind of interjects herself into those um, murder mystery cases as well. So needless to say, I love this series. And um, the fact that there are just so many books in this series, if you've never read one, I urge you to pick one up just because they are just, you know, very cozy, essentially. We've got Jessica Fletcher, which let's be honest, is a very um, quick witted, but still, you know, kind of grandmotherly character. And I don't mean that in a sense to where she sits around and knits all day, but just something about her is very comforting. You know, she's a sweet older woman, but at the same time, like I said, very sharp. She reminds me of my own grandmother. You're not going to catch her just needle pointing, not that there's anything wrong with that, and hanging around inside all day. She's got her own social life. She is out and about doing things, etc. But anyway, <laughs> um, one thing to note about this series, which I love, is the fact that um, you've kind of got this nice balance between the Cabot Cove small town setting 
being um, the backdrop for a lot of the books, and then the other half of the books being set in some other locations. And that could be anywhere from like Nashville, Tennessee, to Hawaii, to somewhere in the Caribbean. And I really enjoy that because since you don't need to read these in order, whatever you're in the mood for, you can kind of just pick one of the books up based on that. So for example, last summer, or maybe two summers ago, <laughs> obviously, you know, I was in the mood for some kind of beach getaway as we usually all are in the summertime and that's when I picked up one that was set in Hawaii and then once wintertime rolls around and it's Christmas and I'm snuggled up at home I ended up reading a Christmas theme one that took place in Cabot Cove Maine so of course you get your snowy setting and just those warm and cozy vibes so again this is one that um, has so many books in its backlist you can really just pick one up based on what your preferences are any of the books in the series you don't need to read them in order okay so this next series I would say is one of the most famous or well-known cozy mystery series and that is the cat who series by Lillian Jackson Braun now Full disclosure, I am not as familiar with this series as I am with the previous three that I've mentioned, but it would be remiss of me not to include it on this list because as I mentioned, it's super popular and it's got an epic backlist of 29 books. Now, if you're not familiar, um, this series centers around a reporter named Jim and his two cats named Yum Yum and Coco, I believe. <laughs> so first of all, if you are a cozy mystery fan who loves um, cozies that feature pets in general, be it cats or dogs, obviously this one has cats, then this is definitely one for you. I mean, it's in the title with the cat who such and such. And um, I love that because each of the books in the series starts off with that title. So the cat who um, sorry, my phone's beeping. <laughs> um, so anyway, we've got, um, you know, titles such as like the cat who saw red or the cat who etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's also another fun way to kind of tie everything in. To be honest, it reminds me of the titles of each of the Friends episodes, um, which side note, if you haven't ever noticed or read the descriptions that I have in my videos, I kind of play off of that with the whole the one where so and so which again is how they do all of the Friends TV show titles. That's just a random side note. But um, yeah, the two of those things kind of correlate to each other. <laughs> but like I mentioned, this one also has an epic backlist. Unfortunately, I don't think that there are any more books that are going to come out. Um, but with 29 books, in the backlist already, you've got quite a few to keep you going, even if this is a new to you series. Next up, we have Joanne Fluke's Hannah Swenson series. Now, even if you've never read these books uh, and this sounds familiar to you, it's because Hallmark Movies and Mystery Channel has been actually um, producing and coming out with films based on this series, which I love, by the way. <laughs> um, it's rare, obviously, as book lovers, where we watch watch movie adaptations and we think that um, they're just as good as the books, this is one of those special cases because I'm thoroughly entertained. Alison Sweeney plays um, Hannah Swenson and she does such a fabulous job. So, um, you know, even if you've never read the books but it sounds interesting, maybe you can check out one of the movies, which again, also just as interesting. But anyway, as far as this series, Hannah Swenson owns um, a, I want to say bakery, I'm sorry, a cookie shop named The Cookie Jar in Minnesota. And, you know, obviously she's an amateur sleuth since she is a cookie slash bakery owner. <laughs> and you're just following along with her as she solves crimes within her small town. Now, as far as the amount of books, we have currently 27 books in the series, which again, well over the number 20 amount that I mentioned earlier in the video. So you've got an epic backlist to choose from to dive into. Um, I've read a handful of these, so I feel comfortable enough saying that you don't need to read them in order. Um, let's face it, most cozy mysteries you don't 
need to read in order, even if it's a situation where you've kind of got an underlying plot line in terms of like, um, I don't know, like interpersonal relationships between the characters, usually that doesn't necessarily play so much of a factor to where you can't skip around in the series, since again, those B plots aren't necessarily integral to the individual murder mystery plot lines for the story. So that said, if these sound interesting to you, feel free to pick one up, pick multiple up. Um, as far as the titles go, they're um, all bakery related, which obviously makes me hungry and is super cute. So you've got a title based on key lime pie and chocolate chip cookies and red velvet and blueberry muffins. I probably should have eaten before I did this video. <laughs> but anyway, super adorable. And if you like foodie cozies, then definitely pick this one up, especially if you have a sweet tooth, or maybe not. Because again, if you are, you know, knee deep in this series and you don't have any sweets on hand, it's gonna be painful to get through these books if you're reading scenes about her delivering and making cookies and pastries and ugh. Definitely gonna have to get something after I finish wrapping up. Next up, we have Laura Child's Tea Shop Mystery Series. Now, I adore this series. Um, I'll be honest, it's simply because I love cozies that feature coffee or tea. Um, I'm pretty sure I had a video last year that was a roundup talking all about coffee and tea cozies, and there's a good reason why. I mean, other than the fact that I love them, there are just so many out there. So naturally, I'm not the only one who loves them. <laughs> but anyway, there are currently 23 books in this series, and um, that is that is plenty. That is plenty for you to um, curl up with a cup of tea, which is perfect because let's be honest, us book lovers and probably cozy mystery lovers do that a lot. <laughs> but this series stars a woman named Theodosia Brown um, who runs a tea shop in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, I love this series so much because of the descriptions of everything. Now, obviously when it comes to cozy mysteries, one of the better traits of them is the fact that you're getting the descriptions based on the theme of the cozies and I think that this series does a standout job of doing that because even though it's tea based <laughs> Laura Childs in general just does such an excellent job um, with the imagery of the story that you can't help but feel like you are in South Carolina either you know the winter time or one of those hot humid summer days um, you know when she describes the tea shop that um, our main character owns, I can envision it so well in my head. And obviously, you know, when describing the teas, which is part of the story, <laughs> it, it, you can just smell it, you know, it just, the aroma is so rich just from the descriptions alone. And that's one of the reasons why I'm happy to mention this series. And, um, you know, again, obviously it's got a long backlist to read from, but I love this series so much because of the descriptions. So I want to say it's actually one of the series that I I recommend um, to people that aren't necessarily cozy mystery lovers just because the writing is so rich that it really helps carry you through the book and ugh, I love it so much. <laughs> so I'm happy, like I said, to mention it on this list. It's got a long backlog to choose from. And um, one of the things that I do wanna note, which is quite frequent in a lot of, if not most of the cozy mysteries that I've mentioned, is that um, it is set in South Carolina, but um, each of the books kind of just span throughout the year. So if you are a seasonal reader, which I've mentioned multiple times that I am, you can pick up a book based on um, the time that it's set. So, you know, for example, winter time or summertime or etc. cetera. Um, again, I personally live in the South. So <laughs> reading about um, a book set in the summertime in South Carolina just hits home for me because the temperature is just so similar that when Laura Childs is describing the sticky sidewalks and all of that kind of stuff, I'm like, same girl same i'm living it right now <laughs> so yeah definitely check this series out if you've never heard of it even if you've read like one or two books um if you get the right book you know pick up the right book that resonates with you just know you've got 20 plus more to dive into afterward last up we have leslie stone's lucy meyer series now let's go ahead and get it out of the way <laughs> there are currently 27 books in this series so again epic backlist for you to pick up. But um, as far as what this series is about, we've got Lucy Stone, who is a um, small town reporter in a 
a town in Maine, I believe. And, um, you know, she's doing her amateur sleuth thing, et cetera, et cetera. However, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, the main thing actually, in addition to it having a long backlist, is um, the premise of all of the books. And this series stands out to me because it's a heavy emphasis on the seasons and holidays. And what I mean by that is that majority of the books take place during some kind of holiday event, which I love. I've mentioned over and over again, yes, I'm a mood reader, but I like to line my um, cozy mystery books up with the seasons or the holidays, meaning if it's Christmas time, obviously I want to read like a Christmassy book. If it's 4th of July, I want to read some kind of summery book, and this series just excels in that. So if you're anything like me, definitely pick that up um, for that little, you know, tidbit. But this series actually takes it a step further because it also centers around um, kind of what I would consider like non-government holidays. <laughs> and what I mean by that is like Father's Day, Mother's Day. I mean, yes, you do also have your traditional holidays such as the Christmases and the 4th of Julys, but it takes it a step further, which I absolutely love because what that means is that you could literally pick one of these books up during any time of the year and be able to basically go along with the character as they're experiencing things set in that specific month or around that specific holiday as it's happening in your real life as well, which I think is just so cool. I feel it's it makes the story more immersive because again, when you're getting the descriptions of like the weather and stuff like that and you're experiencing the same, if not close, then it's like, yeah, I can definitely feel that cold wintry chill that the writer is talking about because it's set around Christmas and you know, it's technically 30 degrees where I'm at right now while I'm reading this. So it, it's just so much fun when you kind of combine the real life with um, the book that you're reading, which is one of the reasons if not the main reason why I recommend this series. Okay, so there you have it, a handful of books with super long backlists, which I find are perfect candidates for being bingeable cozy mysteries. Again, I've mentioned multiple times how much I love cozies that have long backlists, how I love reading series in general, simply because you get to just hang out with the characters and in their world longer. And these books exhibit that. They are the poster children <laughs> for long series. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm just kind of mentally going down the list of the books that I just went over. Um, the one with the least amount was 23 books, and then we've got the largest with a whopping 50 something. So um, between those two numbers, that's a large gap. That is a lot of books to go through. And I think that's perfect. You know, you don't necessarily need to start from the first book. Uh, cozies are one of those things where I make the exception to my own personal rule. But at the same time, you could skip around. You can start from book one. If you're one of those people, which let's be honest, you can raise your hand if you are, <laughs> who reads a book in a series, just one, and you're like, ooh, I love this, and then goes out and buys all of them without even giving it a second thought. Or even if you buy um, entire series just knowing in your heart that you're going to really enjoy it, this video is definitely for you. Um, in fact, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and suggest at this point, after watching this video, you mosey on over to like eBay or something and just go ahead and browse the books that I've mentioned because that's probably going to be your best bet in finding all of these backlists for a discounted price. I have my friends, um, books with Samantha, um, Desiree over at Genkai Reader. She's not a cozy uh, mystery lover like I am, but she does do a lot of romance. Um, basically, a lot of my bookstagram and booktube friends who have done eBay book hauls to thank for this because before them, I never even gave eBay a first thought. I gotta be honest, I usually either love going to my local used bookstore, my regular bookstore, or Amazon if I'm gonna order something online. Every once in a while, thrift books, even though technically their shipping takes forever. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I never thought about eBay just because, you know, why when there's Amazon? But eBay is a hidden gem for older books, for backlist titles. And so I feel like eBay 
plus this video is the perfect combination because I guarantee you there's somebody out there who is selling boxes of these backlist books, again, for discounted pricing. So if you're like me and you love buying entire series or um, you know stacks of books at one time, either after only reading the first book or having never read the book at all, then definitely check it out. Obviously this video isn't sponsored, <laughs> but it would be remiss of me not to mention it because I love enabling people to buy books and I don't want you to break the bank to do that. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this video. As usual, let me know if you've read any of these books and if you did what you thought of them. Um, if there are other cozy mysteries with long backlists that you'd love to mention, please feel free to drop it below in a comment. They don't necessarily have to be as epic as 20 plus books. To be honest, I was actually going to do this roundup with books that have like 15 or more, but then I'm like, nah, go big or go home. <laughs> but um, what I have to say is like, you don't necessarily need to only mention books with 20 plus. It can be 10 or more or 15 or more. Hell, it could be five because let's be honest, that's enough to get you through the entire week if you pick up a book and you're like, I'm obsessed with this, I need to keep going. <laughs> so um, yes, like I said, please uh, let me know in the comments if you've read these, what other suggestions you have. And in the meantime, please Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it. Happy reading, happy shopping, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!